So, um, the summary of the session here is Wikimedia projects. Um, I'll, I'll just read it roughly. They provide some text corpora. And those text corpora, they contain millions of words and phrases and other lexicographical data. Um, but uh, this is right now presented there uh, typically just as sets of strings or sets of characters uh, on a wiki page. And it's not necessarily annotated in terms of lexemes. The main uh, exceptions to this are, of course, Wiktionary and then the lexeme space in uh, Wikidata. Uh, although we have um, bits and pieces here and there, for instance, in the definitions or, of, uh, or in the, the labels on Wikidata as well. Um, and uh, now my, um, the main question I want to discuss today is, we have all these uh, text corpora in many languages and it's uh, lots of um, yeah, lexemes and also hints at grammar. Um, and the question is, how can we leverage that? Um, and of course, um, two main approaches uh, that come to mind. One is like automated approaches, uh, like text mining, essentially, um, natural language processing. And the other one is crowdsourcing. And uh, probably uh, it will be a useful mixture of the two that would allow the, uh, this um, corpus or the, these corpora to be leveraged at scale. And uh, for, I wasn't aware of every, anyone actually doing this or working towards this, even though I suspect that the number of people, including probably some of the poll, uh, have had similar thoughts. And so this session is just uh, meant to be a catalyst for having a conversation about this topic. Um, so the goal is to enrich the lexicographical um, data that we have um, for now in the lexeme namespace in Wikidata, but potentially uh, later on somewhere else. So grammar, for instance, is something I'm very interested in as well. And um, then uh, in order to do this enriching, uh, it would be nice if we could make use of the corpora that we already have. And um, here we uh, are actually free to think beyond the main namespace. So if there is useful content in the project uh, namespace or uh, the media wiki namespace or even the talk spaces or anything like that, that's all uh, for, for the purposes of, of today, that's within scope, including even Fabricator and other things or any, any tool on Toolforge um, if there are lexemes that are relevant, um, like things like Tabernacle, for instance, within the Wikimedia uh, ecosystem, people know what this is, or many people know, and uh, then that's that's a tool that that's an enti lexical entity, and we should think about how to make that easier to uh, enter not just into the lexical graphical corpus, but also then reuse it such that whenever this thing pops up, for instance, on a talk page people who don't know what tabernacle is, they can click on it and then they see, oh, we're talking about this meaning of that particular term. Yeah, so that was my introduction. Uh, and if you have questions or comments uh, on this, yeah, uh, someone already understood what my demo is gonna be, yes. Um, so as long as I don't see anything from your end here in this uh, etherpad, um, the next thing I have planned is uh, that we go through uh, two uh, simple tools and I think from there uh, discussion will likely uh, emerge and you're most welcome to interrupt me at any time either directly in the etherpad or if you, by just speaking into uh, the Jitsi thing. Okay, yes, someone is typing a question in line 21. Yeah, what about the license? Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, let's wait until the typing is finished. Yeah, I think here it depends uh, at how many words. <laughs> uh, for single words, the answer is clearly yes. Uh, and But somewhere at composite words, if uh, it, it gets into the realm of copyright, I think uh, typically 
uh, jurisdictions make uh, a distinction between somewhere around seven words or so when text becomes copyrighted. Uh, but that's that's a tricky thing. But in, in general, I would say any uh, word or, or uh, that 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 is a term in and of itself uh, is basically a, yeah is, is a data set. Yeah, a word alone. Yeah, the question is then whether a, a word uh, like their uh, time stamp, for instance. Ah, yeah. ah, okay. So someone's just recording my answer. Okay, good. <laughs> I thought someone uh, you had a. Uh, comment on this yes and also this is uh, precisely the way I want to see this discussion uh, evolve so someone has a question and if you know anything about this just type the answer in there uh, if you want to say something about it just say so uh, otherwise I will try to be the moderator here so if there is a question and nobody has answered it yet then I will try to comment on it maybe I know the answer maybe I don't um, yeah, but uh, the principle is who is not speaking is uh, kindly invited to help um, document. And uh, if you're tired of documenting, then you can also say so and somebody will see it and maybe pick this up. Okay, so um, next thing I want to do is, yes, demo the two tools. One of them is called or Orgia, the other one uh, is basically Tabernacle. Um, and uh, yes, uh, someone pasted in the link lexicographical coverage. Okay, uh, we can go to this uh, later. So I propose we, we start with the Ordia and especially, yes, the tool here that someone has uh, um, kindly added. So if you click on the link on uh, line 28, um, you come to this tool. And uh, this is now where I wanted you to have some sort of a wiki page at hand to, to paste in later. I, I'll briefly demo this, but I encourage you to do this for your own uh, wiki. So I'll go to, um, let's say, the English Wikipedia, and I'll basically just because this session here is, is in English and to make it more, most accessible. Uh, and I'll hit the random button a few times, and then I, I'll check uh, whether any of those fits. So this one is too short. Okay, well, so <laughs> I'll just take this one. I do control A, control C. So I'll paste the entire text of this here into Ordia. Uh, oh yeah, Ordia, I have to do this, this text to languages. Oh yeah, text to languages is one thing. Uh, I'll show this as well. Um, but uh, this usually breaks down if, if, if you do the uh, entire Bit. So I, first I go to the tool text to like scenes that you find by the tool uh, link here on, on top. And then uh, since uh, whoever wanted me to demo uh, this um, text to languages thing, uh, we can also do this. So what we do here is we paste some content into uh, this tool here. Uh, yeah, let's lowercase all the letters and then uh, we submit and what it does is it looks for the letters in the text that we've just given it and then it uh, tells us how many languages know these uh, these words basically um, and so yeah English is the most likely uh, language of this um, text but uh, Latin and French are not too too wrong because yeah it's a French uh, name here and uh, French names here more French here um, so um, yeah, so that's one tool you can use. If you don't know what the language is, well, typically for Wikipedia you do, uh, but uh, you might have another text tool, so you can throw that in. And uh, then this tool tells you uh, the language of the text that you have in front of you. Um, the thing I wanted to actually demo is um, that how you can check to what extent the text that you have. And I, I suppose that by now you all have some text either in, in, the, in your memory uh, ready to be pasted or already pasted into this um, form here. Um, you would have to choose a language, so I chose English, you can choose uh, the language that's relevant for you, and then the casing that uh, has to be adapted. Most languages don't care much about uh, casing, uh, some languages do, like German, um, but uh, here I'll lo just lowercase everything. Um, and then we hit the submit button, and what this does is uh, it asks Wikidata for lexemes that correspond to the strings that are contained in this uh, text. Yeah. 
Um, and essentially, oh yeah, we can sort this also um, basically by form. So this was, yeah, Academy, for instance, yeah, this was a French person. So the French uh, spelling of Academy uh, it, uh, is present in this text. And of course, this is not a, a, an English word. Uh, so it doesn't exist as a form on Wikidata, but for instance, at at Mentity, I have no idea what this is, but if it were a word in English, we could then uh, click on this. Let's see whether we find something. Um, there's too much French in here, so this w probably wasn't a good example. Um, December Dynasty European. So, yeah, there's too much French in here. I'll, I'll uh, switch to another example here um, uh, because. Uh, the Frenchiness uh, just makes this more. Oops, this was the wrong. This was the wrong window. Uh, Frenchiness makes this a bit more complex than uh, useful for a demo. So uh, again, I just pasted this in. Admentity is coming back. I don't know what this is. You're not sharing your screen anymore. I'm not sure. It tells me I'm sharing my entire screen, uh, so this might be a Jitsi thing. Can you maybe try again? Uh, okay, I'll stop sharing my screen and then retry again. Oh. Better now? Yes, yes, thanks. Okay, I don't know what this was. Uh, so it stopped somewhere in between or what? <laughs> no, 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 that was no, just, just second. Second. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Fine. Yeah, but uh, nice that you reacted so quickly. So yeah, if there is some uh, blip or so, just try to chime in immediately. So uh, I'm still looking for some words that uh, are actually uh, words that we should have as uh, lexemes in Wikidata. And uh, it's not entirely clear. So many of those things here uh, are Hiranya Konda. Basically, I, I took a random article, and it looks like all the useful words are already uh, are already in uh, in the lexeme namespace, or the article was just too short. Um, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you again. There seems to be again something wrong with the screen. Can you stop sharing and then share it again? Oh my goodness! Sorry about that. That's maybe a thing. Yeah. Maybe Jitsi doesn't like uh, the JavaScript going on uh, with the audio or something like this. So I'll do the share entire screen again. Okay, okay now, now it, now it looks, looks good. good. Okay, yeah, so um, maybe someone ha actually has a better example. So I'll um, try yet another uh, page. Oops. Yeah. Um, and also, if you have observations while you're doing this with the article that you had chosen, that, uh, those observations are also useful. You can type them into the. Uh, I have no idea why I'm getting this identity thing here all the time. Um, I've yet to aeronautic. So much French in here. I don't know. Someone's playing games with me. <laughs> That's. Maybe, oh yeah, it's a French army thing. Uh, for some reason, the English Wikipedia gave me uh, several random things that are all related to France. Uh, uh, I, the reason I chose this random uh, thing, because otherwise uh, I, I'm biased. I have my uh, articles for which I have done this. For instance, anything around climate change has already gone through this process. And I've uh, worked my way through those um, those articles. Monday roller skating. Let's take that roller skating. That's m maybe the most useful word here. In so here, yeah. From from Audia, uh, we have these blue links here, and uh, Audia links us to uh, a, another tool. Um, or it, it's still Audia. Uh, but here we can go directly to the new Lexeme uh, creation space in Wikidata. Uh, that is kind of the backup solution that works for any language. But for some languages, um, we have additional Lexeme forms available. 
and uh, this may or may not be the case for the language that you've chosen. Uh, so here uh, I'm, I chose English, for English this works. We can consider whether roller skating is a noun or a verb or an adverb or an adjective. It can actually be a noun or it can be a verb. So I'll just take the noun because that's easier. Um, I have to um, allow this tool to edit. Yeah, and so this is the, the roller skating that took place in the park. There is no plural. Uh, I'll just go to the advanced and then I create this as a uh, lexeme. Now this, has, this thing has a name, an, an identifier, and it's in English, and then we can uh, give it a, like in, in English, we can give it a, a little uh, loss that's a sport, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let, yeah. Since this is now on Wiki, you can all go in and make it uh, better, and then we can try to link this uh, item for the sense, and then let's see whether uh, this is already in there. Roller skating, no. Uh, so that's that's where it gets a bit more complicated. So um, this is probably due to Wikipedia not making a distinction between roller skate, uh, like the tool, uh, versus roller skating the activity. Um, whereas in Wikidata, um, we, we should be making this distinction because semantically these are different things. You're using the tool to, to make the activity. And the um, Lexeme namespace should, of course, reflect that. Um, so one thing I could be doing now is um, going and creating those things, but I'll, I guess our time can be better spent. So I'll leave this open for the moment, and if anyone wants to fix it, we can do it. Or please do it, uh, and otherwise we can leave it for later. I hope that someone uh, is taking a note, or oh, I can just paste that thing in uh, the Etherpad here. Um, so that was basically uh, the result of my uh, run with this tool. Did anyone else um, try this workflow and came up with uh, some Lexeme uh, that? Um, that they created this way. If so, please paste it in here in line 30. Or uh, if you got stuck somewhere in the process, that's also uh, something that would be useful uh, to to mention. And um, I, I demoed this quick manual workflow just to show that, yes, we, we there is a simple uh, workflow from essentially any wiki page to a Lexeme in Wikidata. And now the question that I want to address in like the remainder of uh, the session is to what extent can we automate that so we can of course mine all the pages on in the wiki space uh, we can check which strings already exist in which languages uh, on uh, wiki data as like seems it will be a bit harder to um, distinguish between the different senses uh, but even there we could do things um, yeah so that's just to kind of still not lose the focus. I don't see anyone typing around this example here on line 29. So I guess in terms of a demo, this was good enough. Um, now I'll, get, I'll switch to another thing that I also encourage you to play with. Uh, note that this has a language parameter here. You can again choose your uh, the language of your choice. Um, and I have Swahili here uh, as my default. And uh, so what this does is it looks at items with a disease ontology ID. So essentially it's diseases most of the time and a mesh descriptor. These are two uh, controlled vocabularies around medicine. And I have them with descriptions in multiple Indian languages. Um, yeah, I know essentially none of those Indian languages. I can read a little bit of Urdu here. Um, and also my Swahili is very basic, but we have English here as our as our guide, and this is just there to kind of demo uh, how you can do things. So there's a simple Spark query that basically um, creates this list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Sorry, 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 sorry to interrupt again. Oh, um, um, the, the screen, screen share, share has stopped again. Oh my goodness! Uh, it still s it tells me I can make a screenshot to, uh, where it still says me uh, tells me you're sharing your entire screen. I will click on the stop sharing now and try to reconnect. It's it's strange. I I would blame Jitsi on this, but I wouldn't be surprised if Jitsi has some strange interactions with uh, some of the JavaScript that's going on here. Um, okay, we're back. 
Yes, yes, seems, seems fine. fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry for that. So you all have this uh, link. You can configure it in in your language, and um, one. Uh, so, uh, so these are the diseases ranked by number of Wikimedia site links. So basically, Wikipedia articles, but not entirely. Um, and uh, then, if you want to translate uh, between languages, so for instance, uh, we can zoom or we can scroll down. There's here. There is a gap. So this is which language? Telugu. Uh, if Telugu, uh, if you know the term for autism in uh, Telugu, that's the kind of thing that we want to fill in, for instance. And of note, this is not the lexeme space. This is just the label space in Wikidata. Um, and um, so um, there are some tools that facilitate that, actually. Um, one of them is named Tabernacle. Uh, hello, I had Tabernacle. I thought I had it. Uh, I'm a bit irritated right now. Um, so there is a, a tabernacle tool that allows to switch between these things. Yeah, I think I had it here. Can someone see tabernacle here? Am I just... Tabernacle. Okay, let's try this one then. Uh, I thought I had an, a separate link for this. So uh, what this does is, if it works, finally, it's, it's running somewhere in the background. Uh, so the, the basic idea with Tabernacle is that it, yeah, it presents the information, um, and here it only gives this in English, but there are ways to configure this uh, in any uh, number of languages, and then you can basically log in and you can basically fill out this table. So I have this example, that, like Telugu and autism, and if I had this table here properly organized, I could basically just go in and. Uh, do the Tulugu and, and autism kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so that is another manual mechanism to interact with the, um, the different languages, but this is in the uh, label um, namespace, basically. Um, and then we have tools like uh, macht Sinn. Um, so makes sense is another tool. Um, I'll put this here. Uh, that then translates essentially from the label. I have to log in. Okay. So, Elagra, I don't know what that is. Uh, fragment now on a computer graphics data necessary to generate a single pixel worth. I'm not entirely sure this is the right thing. SMT. So what this tool does is it presents you with things uh, that uh, are that have a label in uh, Wikidata, um, and then uh, it find no uh, no this is no this is a lexeme and it and then it finds descriptions of things from um, the main namespace in Wikidata and uh, you can then match things. I'm really bad at doing this while I'm explaining things, so but let's. Columbia now in a breed of sheep, I don't know, might well be. <laughs> um, let's play a few more, and you can also play this in, in your language. You can actually configure the language here. Um, um, but yeah, I'm not going to do this live. And it doesn't work well for verbs, so you always have to look, watch out for nouns uh, right now, because the, the item namespace in Wikidata is dominated by nouns. Taika is a genus of insects. This actually sounds familiar. Um, but here is a city in Chile. No, so a city in Chile is not a genus of, of insects. Centrifuge. Yes, so that's one thing I know. So here is a match. Uh, oh my goodness! <laughs> Very good example here. So a centrifuge. What I just did is this edit here, I guess. Uh, let's check the history. Yeah. So I edit the sense device for rotating containers. Uh, about no, it's this edit here. Device for rotating containers about a fixed axis, um, and uh, then also item for the sense. Yeah, also this thing. So basically, this entire sense thing. Um, yeah. So that so we have a tool that makes use of this kind of uh, these descriptions in in, uh, in Wikidata and turn them into essentially lexicographical data. All of this involves lots of manual work. And uh, so the question then is, 
how can we, oh yeah, I should probably um, link the example here, centrifuge, um, yeah, and uh, so all of this was manual and we want to think about how this uh, can be scaled up. Someone put in the data lexicographical coverage and uh, so yeah, this, this page provides a nice overview um, of different languages, 42 languages, of course, 42, yeah. What else would you expect? Um, and uh, we see that um, there, I actually don't know precisely what, what these uh, different things uh, mean. I, I have looked at this page before. Uh, so, uh, whoever put in the link, maybe you you want to give a, a brief um, intro to this page. Uh, otherwise, I would just say uh, it shows us some data, but I can't really interpret it right now because I haven't looked at it in a while. Um, I can talk a little bit about this. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so what it shows is basically taking Wikipedia as a corpus. Um, the whole of Wikipedia, um, which, uh, how many of those were so similar to what um, the tools were just showing, um, how many of these are already covered by the lexicographical data in um, Wikidata, and how many are missing? So forms are different words, and tokens are how, how often these words appear. So what we see on the right side is basically weighted against the actual appearance of those words in the corpus. And on the left side is like, if every word would be only once, how many of those are covered? Um, so we see a little bit of statistics for the languages that we have here. Unfortunately, it's only a small, a smaller set of languages, like I think 30 or something like this. Um, but uh, they have been more added to um, uh, since, since I created this. Um, and uh, people have been updating, mostly Nikki and Ma here have been updating, I think also Nicholas. Uh, thanks for that. This is really great work at see that uh, this is being taken up. I should put the code of this on <laughs> in source control finally. Um, still haven't done that, sorry. Um, what you also get is the list of most frequent missing forms. Um, so if you click on any of these, what you will get is the the forms, not it's the forms, not like seams, which are missing in the given uh, language and uh, which are most frequent in the given language. So uh, you see here, for example, there are a lot of um, uh, simple words still missing in Bulgarian, um, a lot of connector words, which just, you know, just adding some of those will probably increase the percentage of coverage dramatically, which is the nice thing about language um, thanks to yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's roughly about this. Okay. If there are questions, happy to answer. If you, Daniel, do you want to do a little question session, <laughs> if you have anything? Um, yeah, well, I, I would uh, like to play with this more. I've seen this page a number of times, but haven't really interacted with this, and also Every time I looked at this, I wasn't sure whether this is actually updated on a regular basis. And so, uh, and also you can't click on this, mm -hmm. so I can't really use it directly, but um, in some the, the clicking is on the most frequent missing forms. It's basically the only link you have. Like from there on, you can go and create the words. Yeah. But yet, um, yeah, that's the only, it's not an interactive page in that sense. Yeah. Okay, so, but at least, now that you've refreshed my memory, so we see that for Danish, like the most frequent Danish words uh, seem to be in already. Um, mm -hmm. Also for Germany, German at least, English even, also the most frequent English words, oh, interesting. Um, they seem to be in, Esperanto, yeah. Spanish, any outliers? Yeah, oh, okay, Farsi um, doesn't have a lot of like scenes in Wikipedia yet. Um, yeah, so lots of things to do. Uh, what about Hebrew? Is Hebrew in? Interesting, because Hebrew has a, quite a lot of lexemes already, but still uh, not enough in, uh, or less than half of the uh, most frequent ones. One funny thing with Hebrew is that, in fact, there are more forms in Wikidata than they are tested in Wikipedia, um, which is not surprising for languages that actually have um, 
uh, inflections and so on. It has a lot of inflections and so on. But yeah, in fact, there are more different words in Wikidata already in Hebrew than they are actually in Wikipedia. Yeah, well, may well be because maybe Wikipedians they use a limited vocabulary to describe things or things that you wouldn't uh, that you would use, for instance, uh, when talking on the street or in some formal settings or things you wouldn't use uh, when writing with encyclopedia articles. I could imagine that. Um, okay, so yeah, it would be nice if we could use something like this as some sort of a coverage. And also, uh, if we had some examples that were not just Wikipedia, but maybe Wikisource or Wiktionary or something like this. Um, um, yeah, because we, we have all these different corpora. Yeah. I'm promising again to put at least the source code into some, um, <laughs> into, into GitHub or something. Um, I hope I'll just do it today or tomorrow. But, and, and so people can play with it and do it with other corpuses. Yeah. Okay, so we are uh, like 37 minutes into the, the hour. We have like 20 minutes left. And so I want to make sure we have a uh, discussion uh, just of the kind that we had here. So you had. Uh, created a tool that already looks at basically Wikipedia as a text corpus, and then to what extent is that text corpus represented in Wikidata lexemes, roughly, right? That is a translation of this page here. Yeah? And um, then, uh, yeah, what, what do the others uh, think? Why did you come here to, to attend this session? Is there something that crossed your mind that we haven't discussed about yet? Uh, please put it in the etherpad uh, somewhere where I'm looking at, or uh, just speak up. I don't see anyone type anything here. Um, because what I wanted to show, I have shown already. I can show a little more uh, or go into some more details of the Bordia and text to lexeme forms, for instance. But these are all manual things. I'm more interested in large scale uh, things. And also uh, how we can tie this in, for instance, with Translate Wiki or uh, any other uh, reuse mechanisms or even like. Uh, um, abstract Wikipedia or uh, Wiki functions. Yeah, someone. Oh, yeah. Specific uh, topic specific collections. That's something I'm very interested in as well. So, as I mentioned, I already worked my way through uh, like climate articles uh, and related stuff and um, lots of science um, articles. And so, here, Hobi uh, was working through the Bundesgesetzblatt. I guess this is Germany or Austria, right? Or maybe even Switzerland, but I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, nouns out of legal um, documents, yes. Um, and yeah, since you specifically mentioned nouns, I'm wondering uh, whether anyone has thoughts on the other um, uh, like word types. Because as I mentioned, the Wikidata item space is largely dominated by nouns. Uh, like even for things uh, that are uh, a process, then we, uh, we give it the, the process name rather than the word um, of like doing things. Um, we would say it's a process rather than doing uh, as Wikidata item. Um, and uh, the, so, so the coverage of nouns is uh, relatively good in, in most of those languages that have decent coverage. With some exceptions, so for instance, someone uh, for for English, someone went through like uh, thousands of adverbs <laughs> for some reason, and so adverbs uh, in English are uh, very well covered, um, down to really rare ones. Um, but yeah, many nouns are still missing, and uh, adjectives are missing, and verbs are uh, we are also missing, and also. Uh, oh yeah, maybe I should uh, show a little bit more of Fordia uh, because something similar to the language studs here that we just had from that uh, page that uh, Denny um, um, presented. So in Ordia you can also look at the different languages. So what it does here is it basically it has a set of Sparkle queries um, and so here it gives you an overview of the languages by a number of like themes in the data. Uh, you see here a set of languages. We see we have 770 entries, which basically means 770 um, languages uh, with at least one entry. And uh, then for each of them, we can click. So let's just pick fast. And uh, then here we get the number of lexemes, number of senses, number of forms, 
number of speakers uh, with often multiple values because the query is rather simple and uh, doesn't take into account that uh, things might change over time or something. Daniel? Yes? So sorry to interrupt. Can you try to reach out again? We have a new hobby here. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, it's, it's back. back. Seems to be back. Seems to be back? Uh, okay, I haven't actually shared it yet. I don't know. No, I'm not. For me, it tells me that I've now just uh, started sharing again. Okay, well, whatever. Um, so you can see it now? Yes, yes thanks. thanks. You're back on the, the audio page for BASC. Yeah. And there, here we have a number of example uh, lexemes. Uh, they're all nouns, uh, the examples. Um, but uh, there is also some statistics. Okay, okay, so in Basque we have some nouns, some verbs, post positive adjectives, phenomena, and so on, all the other uh, word types. And then also, uh, like, yeah, your account, basically the same data again. The longest words and phrases. Um, and then, oh, yeah, demonyms. Nobody has done demonyms. Like, uh, what is. I'm really, really sorry. I think you stuff getting a bit tired. Can you, Can you try, try again, again to, like, stop any stream sharing, sharing and do it again? again? I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Something weird is happening here. Something on my system doesn't like you to. Okay, I'm sharing for whatever tenth time today. So now you can, you're back, you can see it again. Yes. 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 Oh, um, Audio basically just provides a number of statistics here. And also here we have number of forms as a function of number of lexemes. We have some outliers here. Um, this is Estonian, for instance. Um, has lots of lexemes in with the data already and also has lots of forms. There are some other languages like English that has lots of lexemes, but uh, not a lot of forms because, for instance, the pronouns in English, uh, the plural is just to add an S and you don't have any other forms, essentially. Uh, whereas in many other languages you have more forms. Um, and number of senses is number of, as a function of number of lexemes. Here we also have some outliers, Basque. Yeah, so they have uh, the senses already well annotated. Um, whereas in some languages, like here, what's this? Estonian. Uh, so they have done a lot of work on like the, the grammatical part, but not really on the, on the semantics yet. Uh, and so that's another way to uh, estimate the progress. Um, but even for those languages that are already uh, relatively advanced, uh, my assumption would be that we can still make uh, good progress by leveraging the corpora that we have, like for instance, the Estonian Wikipedia to uh, find out some content and context that would help us identify the senses, or here the, the Basque Wikipedia to find some more lexemes or something like this. Um, so, yeah, we have tools like this that can help us get an overview, but we don't really have tools that would assist in the workflow of identifying the, uh, the words, basically the tokenization that Danny was, uh, Danny's graphic was based on. Uh, there are tools that do tokenization, and the, uh, they have to be language specific. They work for a handful of languages uh, rather well, but for, uh, I guess if you go for those 770 or for more, uh, it, uh, the typical tokenization uh, will probably break down quite quickly, so there will be some manual um, refitting involved and uh, probably some yeah, crowdsourcing as well. And that is increasingly difficult uh, the less you know those languages. Um, so some of the things that uh, we might be discussing here are off-the-shelf tools for some languages, and they might be completely impossible for other languages. Um, which is also why it might be interesting to think about um, basically machine learning things. Just give the tool uh, a decent corpus, like a decently sized corpus, and then um, a decently sized corpus in some other languages, and then see uh, to what extent we can use uh, what it learns from those corpora in order to identify useful translations or uh, lexemes that correspond to the same sense in the data, things like that. Uh, we have 15 minutes to go. Some more time for someone uh, else from your end to say something. Sense relations. Over here. Who wants I to? Think I have one question. Um, 
Does anyone know about any tools in the direction of seeing coverage in terms of census? Uh, which is obviously much, much harder, I understand that, um, but just want to know, like giving a sense repository, like the one we have in Wikidata, is there any tool that can be used in order to figure out um, how many senses in a corpus are being actually uh, are being actually covered? Well, I'm not aware of any. The closest I'm aware of is this thing that I'm showing right now. Um, Yeah, but that maybe uh, someone can write this down as a as a question in the pad, so we have it, and uh, we can then follow up. Um, that's the kind of thing that could be posted in the Telegram or in, in some other channels where other people look, not just the ten of us today here. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess somewhere in linguistics, those things exist for some like benchmark corpora, um, but. Uh, for the corporate that we have, maybe not. Maybe a uh, dictionary uh, could be used this way. Um, but it's also, it's not straightforward, but maybe the easiest in, amongst the corporate that we have. Yeah, and, and since we have you here, Danny, maybe you can comment a bit on uh, how you think uh, Wiki Functions uh, can interact with that. Or, uh, yeah, and also programming languages. We haven't spoken about those. I'm actually not entirely sure what uh, programming languages would be in the scope of the Lexeme namespace, but I think they would. And then we could do things like map all the, basically, the function words of a programming language, and then. Uh, yeah, I would, I would strongly advise against uh, putting programming languages into the Lexeme like, namespace. It's it's really not a well, uh, it's not a good space for that. Um, but regarding how wiki functions could interact with the lexicographic like, space, um, well, there's there's one big question, and I think it's a bit too early to start um, uh, discussing it, which is. As we know, a lot of the forms in many languages are quite regular. Um, and it would be kind of easy-ish to write functions, create those regular forms um, in wiki functions. How could we combine that? Like, how could we, you know, not, how could we combine the way that Wikidata is presenting um, Exographical forms with the functions that might generate them in some way, and still allow you know, for example, to annotate functions and so on. Like, yeah, that, that's basically the question. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, this reminds me of basically grammar books. Um, so if you learn a language and then, for instance, you, you look at the different kinds in which the, the verbs can be changed. Uh, those languages where the, the verbs can change, uh, they tend to have, let's say, classes of verbs, and some of them are more regular than others. And so you basically need to know about those, let's say, 15 classes, and then you need like 15 uh, like functions wrapped around the, that are conscious of those 15 classes, and then you can do this. By, and we would need to annotate the verbs just as which class they belong to. Uh, it may be for that specific sense. And then the function generator from Wiki Functions can do the rest. Right, and in some languages we already have this kind of annotations. I think Russian is an example where we have different um, declination types and they're already annotated with that. Um, but we also would still like to have the ability then to, for example, add the annotations on the forms, right? To have statements on the forms and say, well, this form is this and that or whatever. I guess we would like to do that. Um, so it still uh, needs to have some more interaction with what's happening on wiki function. Like, should it be just created automatically and then be there and that's it? Or should there be like, which means that in case of an update, we need to figure out um, a strategy. But the good thing is those Declinations don't update often, so it's really just <laughs> in the question of mistakes. Um, yeah, so yeah, it would be great if if there would be some 
discussions or proposal on how to integrate that, and then we can once Wikifunctions. That's why it's a bit early. Wikifunctions isn't there, right? But once Wikifunctions is there, this I can easily see this one of the earlier things to try out and see how this can connect. Yeah. Since you mentioned annotations, there is another thing I have uh, in mind um, with this corpora idea. Suppose we use, let's say, the uh, Bengali wiki source as as a source corpus for feeding Bengali lexicographical data into Wikidata. Once we have it usefully annotated, then this would essentially allow us to have like annotated in Wikidata to have a layer on the Bengali wiki source that you could switch on and off that would actually tell you uh, something about the meaning of those words that you're reading. And then, uh, if you were to switch on that layer and you notice, oh, there is uh, one word that just doesn't fit, then you can actually maybe ch change the sense uh, for that particular sentence. And uh, then somebody's re restarting my etherpad here. <laughs> um, and uh, that would be another way to actually actively get the uh, lexicographical data curated by people who are actually reading the content uh, on Wikimedia platforms. I actually created a prototype that was a little bit in this direction. I, I just added the link to the end of the etherpad um, annotation. Um, Shake quickly. You want to? Can you show it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been there. One of these examples should be mine somewhere. <laughs> um, so let's just go with the first one here. Uh, do you want to comment on it? So what you see here is basically, well, it's a sentence, and each word in the sentence is being annotated with the relevant lexeme and the form and the sense um, that we see here. So actually, let's go to the Breton one, uh, Breton one. Um, because in English, it's uh, we all know these words because we speak English and we, that's why we're here. Uh, but it's an inter one interesting part is actually that you can also take a, in a different language, uh, like a Nicholas uh, Breton example, and we see that the senses are also given um, if they are available in a sort of a English gloss um, and so on. So all, all of these things are done manually. Um, I would hope that there would be something like a tabernacle like interface it would allow to do like some automatic guessing of those things um, and then maybe have a layer of humans like saying yes but this is just a prototype that was quickly hacked together um, in, in media wiki to show how this could look like as an interface for annotations yeah and uh, I was involved in some uh, let's say efforts on wiki source where we wanted to annotate for instance names of species and locations in some natural history uh, documents. And uh, that was all, all yeah, manual work even before Wikidata came around. Uh, and uh, this was focused on the just the semantics. But in principle, we could use similar workflows uh, that harvest the data from Wikidata to basically suggest and also help in proofreading, for instance. Um, because uh, OCR is never perfect, uh, and uh, then with, especially if we include phrases in a lexicographical uh, namespace, then uh, we might actually be able to identify certain typos, um, it, it, which would help in proofreading on the source. Yeah. Uh, five minutes to go. Uh, there are a lot of people on the call who haven't said anything yet, so I would like to encourage you to speak up or to type up. Um, and uh, otherwise, the uh, question is, how do we move this forward? Do we set up a page on Wiki where we express an interest uh, for this? Oh, yeah, somebody posted something for the form. Uh, that's that's the, the example you wanted me to, uh, to show, uh, Denny. Yeah, I, I didn't understand that. I wasn't aware where at the bottom I should look. I looked at the bottom of, of the page and not at the bottom of the page. Okay. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, it doesn't have many senses too, but for the last one, at least you would know, because, oh, okay, this is the word for, this is the Breton word for uh, for a large body of saline water, so for an ocean or a uh, Actually, no, it doesn't have to be an ocean, right? Um, but, but this uh, shows 
one of the weaknesses and strengths of the Wikidata data model that we have the glosses actually in the different languages. So if there is a, would be a gloss um, attached which doesn't have uh, English gloss, you wouldn't see much here, which is a bit of a... Um, yeah, like here we have English and here we have English and here we don't. And so whoever doesn't speak Breton uh, is, is lost, basically. So there's some link between a person and a large body of saline water. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Good. Maybe it's the old man and the sea. No, but it was a pronoun, so no. <laughs> yeah. what, does, what does the sentence mean, Nicola? Ah, okay. Uh, what did you put it in the, in the Jitsi chat or what? Ah, uh, yes, he said, I'm born in the middle of the sea. Ah, uh -huh, okay. But yeah, this is actually the case for some governor of, the, of some state in the US. <laughs> uh, I, I was looking up, uh, at some point I was just curating uh, places of birth of politicians, and I ended up with a politician who was born in the middle of the Atlantic. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I checked it, there is a reference for this, and yes, this, he was apparently born on a boat. Um, those kind of things happen. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're almost done. I'm, um, yeah, I learned something, so for me it was useful. Uh, but I have a feeling it would be useful to do a bit more of this and a bit more systematically. And also think uh, uh, along those various lines that we've briefly touched upon. So for instance here, this uh, thematic corpora, then the tools that, uh, that already work out of the box in terms of tokenization and such, in order to just get some statistics of what the different wikis we already have, and ideally beyond Wikipedia, uh, can deliver in terms of lexical graphical data, and then uh, have a better link to what is in Wikidata already. And then, of course, ideally the links should come with some sort of tools to help shoveling the content either way, basically. Yeah, long wish list, <laughs> lots of things to do. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who was here, and I hope for further interaction. Now I, I'll leave the last minute to whoever wants to say something at the end. Uh, Daniel, you were confused about what the sense relations link was. Is that right? You just opened it and then closed it afterwards? Sorry, the, the screen was messed up, so I... Uh, uh, I'm not sure what I was confused about, but please finish the, the thought, uh, independent of whether I was confused or not. Just re-explain it. Do you understand what the sense relations link I put in the etherpad was? That, that's my question. Uh, it wasn't clear to me if you understood what that was. Uh, no, I, I guess I did not know what this was. Yeah, so okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think next time if you decide to hold, hold a brainstorming session like this, it would be better to focus a lot on the senses because they're very underdeveloped as it is. But the link I posted, and I'm sorry if the headings weren't very clear. Um, so basically, I mean, every language has senses, but uh, meaning is only really relative to other things, right? And so there are links to uh, from senses to Wikidata items, to other senses, uh, to other senses in other languages. And then that, that, that those tables were basically just counts of senses um, that have links to these other uh, bodies for which meaning could possibly be derived. And at the very bottom, there's another table that has links to items. And those items might have links to things like WordNet and uh, Omega Wiki, which is uh, you know, a predecessor project, and yeah. attaining counts for those. And, and so that, in my view, is, is a kind of coverage that I think needs to be emphasized a lot more than anything which has been emphasized in terms of forms. It's easy to create forms. Denny suggested creating them automatically. But senses can't be derived quite as automatically, and so I think more attention needs to be paid to their curation rather than to curation of forms necessarily. Uh, I agree in principle, it's just that if you want to curate senses, you need the forms first uh, in the way Wikidata is set up right now. Um, that, at least you need the lexeme, the, the, the naked lexeme first. Um, and uh, that's why I was focusing on this. But yes, I agree. But, but what is most interesting is, of course, the link between the string and the meaning. I'd even argue that you don't even really need forms per se to begin adding senses. Yes, you do need the bare like scene, but that's a lemma, and then maybe a form for whatever the lemma represents. Yeah. Uh, I can think of the example, I, I use the example of Swahili verb all the time. So a Swahili verb has lots of different inflections. It's a 
it glued it into the language. You can add a bunch of stuff to it. Yeah. Rather than having 5,000 forms on the Lexeme at the beginning and then not knowing what to do with it afterwards, you could start by adding uh, an infinitive and then add the census. So, okay, what does this verb mean? Because ultimately these other things can be generated automatically with the functions that Denny proposes. Uh, this is true for a lot of Turkic languages as well, and um, I can imagine a lot of uh, languages native to it. The Americas also have this situation. Yes. So yeah. I don't think so. I don't think de-emphasizing senses in favor of forms for languages that don't have either to begin with is necessarily a good thing, because like, I mean, we have Estonian now, but it'll take a lot more time to get it usable for generation of text than it might be for say English or Basque or. Uh, really any other language with a lot of senses. Like, what does the count say? Um, yeah, so Basque, English, Bengali, Malayalam, Swedish. Like, languages with a lot of senses, we can make meaningful things out of uh, yeah. them immediately. We can't do that with Russian. We can't do that with Estonian. We can't do that with Hebrew or Latin. So, um, yeah, it, I'd say de-emphasizing senses is not the way to go. Yeah, I agree, actually. So, um, yeah, the hour has passed. I don't know how strict we have to be. I don't know uh, whether there is another session going on now. Um, I could st uh, stay around for a few more minutes if there is more discussion. Um, otherwise, um, I think mm, we can pick it up later. Maybe even still during these uh, lexical days, if someone feels like this, wants to have a follow-up session, I'm happy uh, to, to facilitate that. Uh, but I will not initiate it this time. Um, and uh, I'll otherwise just use the time to think about it and think about how to interact with the things that I learned about today, like this this page. I don't think I've seen it before. Um, I'll play around with this a little bit more and then play around with the other things, uh, like the page, uh, the pages that Denny showed that I had seen before, but I haven't looked at in, uh, in recent time. 